Hello, my name is Ryan Boland and I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing here at Dr. Mercola. Today I'm here to talk to you about biodynamic farming, which is considered the original regenerative agriculture. After World War I, industrial synthetic fertilizers were created, and what it did was it started to decimate family farms around the world. They tried to look for a solution, and they found that solution in a scholar named Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner did a multiple different lectures on a new process of farming called biodynamic farming. His theories and ideas were then turned into a standard which they created a new organization called Demeter International. Demeter International is actually the oldest ecological standard certification in the world. And those standards are the standards of biodynamic farming. And we'll get deeper into the actual breakdown of the different preparations and how it works. But the most important thing is the philosophy. And that philosophy is broken down as looking at a farm as a living organism. And why is that important? Today, we've gone away from the old ways of farming. And we've done nothing but monocropping and taking our animals and putting them on uh, confined animal feeding operations or CAFOs. And we've decimated our environment. This is looking at it as a living organism. And it starts with a cycle. That cycle, we can start at animal life. In a biodynamic farm, you must have animals. And those animals are a key factor in how that farm actually functions. The animals are allowed to roam. Uh, they place footprints and allow water to retain within the land rather than running off. They, they are used their manure is used within the closed system to make sure that everything survives and is fertilized naturally. It's very, very important. And the animal life obviously goes into your plant life. Now, the plant life is called plant diversity. And what do we mean by that? One thing we don't mean is monocropping. There is no monocropping within biodynamic farming. We do not want just corn and just soy. We, we do not want that. That, 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 is, that is terrible and destroys your soil, okay? It, it does not work and then that is where most of our industrial synthetic fertilizers are used because within monocropping, they're trying to make food production on levels that are just not possible. So plant diversity is growing multiple. It could be 10 different crops. It could be 10 different fruit trees. However your farm is laid out, we use plant diversity. The next is cover crops. Cover crops are very important because they help with photosynthesis, right? They help with soil health and they help soil from eroding and having any issues. And we can plant so many different things from rye to cereal grasses, multiple different things in the middle of your crops, okay? Bringing down photosynthesis, bringing down carbon from the air and into the soil. Next is composting. Now, if you have gardens, which many of us do, you know that composting is key to keep that soil healthy and keep it growing healthy plants and healthy crops. Now, biodynamics composting has a little bit of a different play. See, Steiner created what we call nine preparations. In those nine preparations, they're broken down into composting and spray preps. I'm gonna start at composting. And with that, his compost preparations are there to promote beneficial bacteria, fungi, and healthy balanced soil. We need all those beautiful, healthy organisms living and breeding in that soil to create healthy, nutritious food. And this compost is broken down into six particular herbs, all right? Number 502, yarrow. Number 503, chamomile. Number 504, stinging nettle. Number 505, oat bark. Number 506, dandelion. And 507, valerian. They create a compost that is spread over your soil and provides more of a healthy, balanced soil. The next one is biodynamic spray preparations. Now, the spray preparations are interesting 
Because in all the promotions you see of biodynamics, you see these particular horns, and, and, and the horn is part of the spray preparations. Number 500 is the horn manure. So a cow horn is stuffed with manure and buried during the winter months. After six months, it is removed, placed into a spray, and sprayed over your crops to promote root and humus growth. Okay, and you know, humus, just so you know, is that, is, is that beautiful part of topsoil. It's, it's like the best portion, the darkest portion you have of that soil that is really rich, okay? This promotes the growth of that and the roots of the plants. Next is 501, which is horn silica. Horn silica is basically quartz crystals that are ground up, placed into a cow horn, and they are buried during the summer months. After six months, they're removed from the ground, placed into a spray, and sprayed all over your crops and soil. This actually helps promote soil growth and strengthens photosynthesis. The last preparation is number 508, which is a horsetail tea herb mix that is placed into a spray and sprayed over your crops to help prevent fungal disease. Now what's interesting is fungal disease. We don't use any fungicides, no synthetic uh, fertilizers, no insecticides. Nature is actually used to help prevent any issues on the farm. And people are like, that's, 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 that's ridiculous. It's not. There's a great, great movie called The Biggest Little Farm that you can watch. And I think they lay it out the best. They take an eight years of when they bought a farm and the, the soil was dirt and how they transformed it into a beautiful biodynamic farm called Apricot Lane in California. And what's interesting is they used nature to help with any ailments they had. Uh, I think snails started to invade all of their trees. You know what they did? They brought in ducks. The ducks ate the snails. Okay, gophers started eating the roots of their trees out and started destroying so many things in their land. What they did is they brought in barn owls and it worked. There's so many things you can do with nature. It's, 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 it's miraculous. So this is taking nature, taking the farm, making it a living organism and making healthy, nutritious food. But what's interesting is we're not necessarily farming for the plants. What we're actually farming for, and this is what's so special and important for the times we live in, is we are farming for soil. And what do I mean by that? We're farming to make the soil rich. And how is soil rich? A particular word that comes to mind is the most important aspect here is carbon, okay? We are bringing carbon dioxide from the air into the ground through photosynthesis and making healthy soil and building that carbon higher and higher and higher. Why is that so important? We are at a critical time in life as human beings where we are looking at carbon emissions that are through the roof. And we are trying to figure out a way to make change. And we can make change through regenerative agriculture, through biodynamic farming, through farming for soil and taking that carbon and bringing it into the ground where it belongs. Here at Mercola, we are dedicated to making biodynamics a standard, a standard that we truly believe in and that we will stand behind and provide more and more products as we go from supplements to foods and even clothing is something we're working on at this moment in time. We hope that these standards will be spread into America in larger ways with farmers. We are working behind the scenes to, to bring more farming families to the biodynamic standards and we will continue that journey every day.